All right, so usually I do these videos in real time, but part of the d the deal that I brokered with the receptionist here is that she will only fix motherboards if nobody ever sees that she exists, which means that she can never find out that I posted the Halloween pictures from two years ago to the company Facebook. I'm getting a dirty look right now. Anyway, so we're going to go over what was wrong here. First thing I'm going to do is going to show you what it is that we actually soldered here. I call it current sensing, somebody else calls it common sense, which is actually pretty cool, which means learning is occurring here. So we're going to flow this under the microscope and see. So it hasn't gotten cleaned yet. So there's a little wire that's run here, and this is an important one because we used to outsource this type of business to this terrible, well, used to be great company that now I don't do business with anymore because, again, the board repairs would always come back, they wouldn't work. The parts would have liquid damage. We're currently, I'm confident that the people who watch this channel are going to hear from that person eventually because my resolution to this set was uh, pretty much, you want me to pay you this much money. You, I, I kind of want to pay you this much money. Let's meet somewhere in the middle since a lot of your shit never actually worked and you never took it back. But that's a story for another video. So anyway point here is what, what, this, what this place would often do, and again, the entire idea behind this, this board repair series was to allow you guys to be independent from fucktards that are going to take your money and send you non-working shit. So what they used to do was something like this. So they used to replace this chip when this chip was bad, and you've seen me replacing the ISL6259, the buck converter chip, the buck converter controller chip in many videos. So what I, they used to do is they would replace the chip and they'd replace the resistor around it, but they wouldn't do anything about the pathway between the resistors and the chip. So what would happen? It would work for them, and then that little fucking shit stain of a wire would wind up coming back here, broken, uh, you know, like get jostled out just from shipping. That little piece of ash or corroded crap would break, and it wouldn't charge, or it would have a quarter fan spin, or it wouldn't work. And you know what the customer would say? I'm not going to give you another week with my computer. They would take it back. I wouldn't get credit for it and blah, blah, blah. But hopefully from watching this channel, you're going to learn to avoid that shit. So what this is over here is a current sensing circuit. So the whole idea here is that you have... I'll just open up the actual schematic so that you can see what I'm talking about because that's where this is going to make a lot more sense. So we open up the schematic. Now over here, you have a current sensing circuit. So one of the things we're going to do here is I'm not only going to go over what a current sensing circuit is, we're also going to go over what Apple could have actually done to prevent this problem from happening because the problem that happened with this computer is not a problem that should have ever actually occurred. Now, a whole way a current sensing circuit works is it's going to try to tell how much current or wattage the system is actually using. So this chip over here, the ISL6259 that controls the charger and the battery, it is not actually in the stream. So it's not a, for example, if you want to tell how fast current is moving through a stream, you're going to put your hand in the stream and you're going to feel how fast the water is passing through it. If the water is not passing through very hard, you're going to feel on your hand that the water is not moving. If, if you're at Niagara Falls and you put your hand in, you'll feel that the water is moving really, really quickly. But you have to have your hand in the stream to tell that. Now let's say you're not right by the water. Let's say you're behind the fence. You're behind that fence at Niagara Falls that separates you from the water so that you don't kill yourself. You're not going to be able to tell how much current is going to the stream. So what you may do is you may send your friend down there to put his hand in the stream and tell you how fast the water is moving. And that's exactly what we're doing over here. So this is me behind the fence. This over here is going to be the Niagara Falls. And this resistor is going to be my friend who's in the stream. So we have the charging power. This is the charger power going through the top of this circuit over here, and it's going to go through this resistor. Now, resistors don't have a voltage drop. Resistors are going to have the same voltage on one side as the other if it's just in a circuit. The thing is, this specific type of resistor and this specific type of circuit, it's going to have a really, really small voltage drop. It's going to be very, very negligible. It's going to be like 0 0.0001 volts or whatever. But the important thing is that the voltage drop in the circuit is going to be proportional to the amount of current the system is using. So the voltage drop will be greater if the system is using 5 amps than it will be if the system was using, let's say, a quarter of an amp. Now, what is happening over here is that the ISL6259 chip, this, is communicating with this current sensing resistor. So what it's doing is it's reading the voltage at the top and the bottom. So the whole idea here is that the this chip is going to read the voltage at the top and the bottom of that resistor so that it knows ex what the voltage drop is. So it's going to be able to tell, okay, you have 12 volts at the top of that resistor and you have 11.9 volts at the bottom of it. So there's a 0.1 volt difference. And inside this chip, there's a table of values. So it's going to say, okay, I see a 0.1 voltage drop. That means that the computer is using 3 amps. So some engineer actually sat here at some point measuring 
exactly what the voltage drop would be across that resistor, depending on how much amperage the computer is using. And after they measured all that, they programmed it into this chip. I don't know exactly how that's programmed. I'm, that's not what we're getting into in this video. We're not engineers. We're just troubleshooters who are trying to figure out why something's not working. Now, the whole idea behind how this works is it's going to measure the voltage drop from the top to the bottom. So let's say that you have 12 volts at the top, 12.6 volts, and at the bottom of it, you have 12.599. It's going to think, eh, the computer's not really using a lot of energy. If it sees 12.6 volts at the top, and then it sees 12.550, it's going to think the computer's using a little more energy. Now, what do you think is going to happen if one of these resistors blows, or the pathway blows, between the chip and the resistor? What do you think is going to happen if one of those resistors blows? If one of those resistors blows, or the pathway blows, now it's going to think that, okay, I got 12.6 in the top here, and I have zero on the bottom there. So it's going to think that the computer is using millions and millions of watts when it's not using millions and millions of watts. And what do you think the computer is going to do when it thinks it's using millions of watts? It's going to turn on, and then a split second later, once it detects the current, it is going to shut off. So you're going to get the most dreaded problem that you have on a MacBook motherboard, which is quarter fan spin, where the fan goes tick, and then just turns off, which is a complete fucking nightmare. So what happened on this board is that we had a quarter fan spin issue because this resistor over here was working, but the pathway between that resistor and the actual chip itself was bad. So going back over here to the schematic, R7051 was good. This went to here. This had 2.2 ohms across to here, but there was no continuity between this resistor and this actual pin. And now here's how this problem could have been prevented. Here's why this happened in the first place. You may be wondering, how does a battery current sensing issue take place when I have the battery unplugged? Because in the beginning, I had the battery unplugged while I was working on this machine. Well, here's what happens. So you have this buck converter here taking 18 volts from the charger and turning it into 12 volts for the system. And it's going to show up over here. That means it's going to show up here, 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 because that's all connected by a line, here, and then here. This is where the battery is coming from the battery, and this is also where the charger power is coming through to charge the battery over here. So you have your current sensing resistor right here. Now, that means that you're going to have 12 volts here, 12 volts there, which means you're going to have 12 volts here and 12 volts there. And if this resistor is bad or this pathway is blown, even though the battery is not plugged in, the battery current sensing circuit is going to be going, which means that you're going to see 12 volts here or 12 volts here and then 0 volts over here. So it's going to think that this is not working the way it should. Now, what you could do to make this a little smarter is you could put the current sensing resistor and the current sensing circuit behind over here so that you're not, you're not really going to see that if, uh, if the battery, if, if it's not being told to charge the battery or work off the battery. But instead of having this current sensing resistor over here, you had it over here. And, you know, I would just be kind of be curious how the system would work if I actually rewired it and re-rigged it so that this was over here instead of over here, would I, if, would I still have the same problem? Because, again, why is battery current sensing issue, why is a battery current sensing issue uh, keeping the machine from turning on when I, don't, I didn't have a battery plugged into the computer? It's because that battery current sensing circuit is still actually in the circuit even when you're using just a charger. But, again... All you have to do is look and run a wire. Again, the, the, the thing that really, really, really fucking kills me, and again, I'm, I'm going to clean this. It's going to go through the ultrasonic, so if you're a troll about that, just, just, just GTFO. But like, what really kills me is when a company will say, that doesn't look good, let's replace that, and we'll even if they're feeling great, they'll replace the resistor. But nobody checks the pathway. If you don't check the pathway, if the pathway looks like complete crap, what do you think is going to happen when that gets back to the customer? What do you think is going to happen when that machine makes its way back from your country to theirs, from your state to theirs? It's, it's going to fail. You, you, you tap the board like this, and that little, and that little tr like shit stain of a trace that's made of little ashes is going to disintegrate and die. And it won't work. But it will work if you do this stuff properly. And this is, and again, this is, this is the shit. This is the stupid kind of bullshit that I was dealing with for years and years and years on end when I was outsourcing this type of stuff to other companies. And, and, he, and again, here's the, I, th I talked about this in one of the employee videos about excuses. Here's the thing with that. If you don't know how to do the work that your employees are doing, you're always going to be vulnerable to, to them making things up because it's going to sound plausible. So if somebody says that, you know, this job is supposed to take five hours 
this is what I have to do, look at how hard it is, then you, as somebody who doesn't really know how to do that, may go, I understand. But then if you do that exact same job, and then you realize, I did that job in five minutes and I cut no corners, even though it looked hard, then you'll understand that person's full of shit. And, and I, I was in the, in the same position. When I looked at the stuff that this person did, you have to keep in mind that my history, my history is, uh, was, was game consoles when I was nine years old working on you know, modding the original PlayStation. And after that was advanced troubleshooting in, 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 these, in circuits, but of audio gear. So amplifiers, tape machines, consoles, equalizers, compressors, 1951 to 1988. I mean, 1951 to 1988 was the was the, the range. I mean, surface mount was not there yet. I didn't open anything that actually had surface mount technology on it. So it was a really different world. So when I was looking at the stuff this person and their staff was doing, I was just thinking to myself, you know, I'm never going to figure this out. This is impossible. But then when you actually get to the point of figuring that stuff out and you realize how to do it, and then you go, and then I go back and I listen to all, I just read all these excuses and all this bullshit and all of this, you know, um, oh yeah, if you have a machine that is a retina or an air and you have to change the BIOS, it's going to run slow. It's, it's going to run slow because you guys are idiots who don't know how, what an ME region is. It's not going to run slow because it's supposed to. It's not that, oh, a wire may have fell off during shipping, or, oh, you may have broken it putting into the machine. No, it's that you didn't check the fucking via or the fucking trace right next to the liquid damage chip before you send it back here, because that saves you one or ten seconds. And it's laziness. I used to th attribute that to it being really, really difficult and really, really hard to figure out. Now, as somebody who knows it, now I can attribute it to laziness, but you have to kind of know it in order to know if the person who's making up the excuse is full of shit. And that's that.